Hey, welcome back. I'm Ken Steele on the street for a quick survey of this fall's higher ed back to school videos. From presidential welcomes to a week excitement, let's take 10 and take stock. In a previous episode, we looked at the good and bad of social media during orientation season. And while there are, as always, plenty of online videos documenting student antics and excitement, <laughs> let's focus today on the more official record. YouTube is filled with examples of back-to-school orientation information, like this one from the University of Prince Edward Island, released just two days prior to the big day. Hey folks, so with new student orientation just around the corner, we wanted to take this chance to show you where you're going to be going on Saturday, September 3rd at 1 p.m. So when you arrive at the university, you're going to be parking in this parking lot here. We want you to bring a water bottle so you can stay hydrated, and then it's a good idea to bring a sweater or something warm because we're going to be outside at night and it might get a little bit chilly. Other institutions recap the excitement of move-in day, like this video from Trinity Western University in British Columbia. It's move-in day, baby! Woo! For 10 years now, O Week at Ryerson University in Toronto has included an organized event to set a new world record. This year, more than 1,200 students, faculty, and staff popped the Guinness World Record for bubblegum blowing. But back to school videos also tackle heavier issues. In a previous episode, we looked at videos about campus and dorm room safety. Respect and sexual consent campaigns are also prevalent at this time of year, and with good reason. Unfortunately, the first few weeks of school are when the vast majority of on-campus sexual assaults occur. In an effort to keep things gender neutral, this fall the Sexual Assault Resource Center at Montreal's Concordia University enlisted some unusual spokespeople. Spokesfruit? Mm hmm? Mm hmm? Hmm. <gasps> oh. Just as we've seen holiday greeting videos proliferating in December, it's no surprise to see presidential welcome back videos in September. Most just capture a president's welcome to returning students, although some are specifically directed at faculty and staff, and some manage to inject some quirky humor, like this from St. Lawrence College President Glenn Volbrecht. Hi, I'm Glenn Volbrecht, and welcome back to St. Lawrence College. One thing about a summer with no rain is that we've all been able to have much more summer fun. You know what I'm talking about, like playing this Poke Mango thing. Oh yes, Pokemon Go, perhaps the viral success of the summer. Within weeks, the new augmented reality game had attracted more than 21 million active daily users in the US alone, more than Candy Crush or even Twitter. Old fogies took delight at mocking the distracted gamers, but some Pokemon hunters actually poked fun at themselves. Of course, the creators of that video were later charged with trespassing on the TTC subway tracks. Don't try this at home. The colleges and universities quickly discovered that their campuses were popular locations for Pokemon hunting. If you take a left turn at Albuquerque, you'll find plenty of Pokemon hunters at the University of New Mexico. 
But if you want to take interactive to the next level, you'll find Pokemon players aplenty at UNM. One of the hottest places if you're looking to catch more Pokemon is right here in front of Zimmerman Library. Many institutions quickly leveraged Pokemon Go to get students exploring more of the campus, like Wright State University in Ohio. Wright State is a great place to play Pokemon Go. The trails, the trees, the paths, you, you could probably spend hours going through our campus with Pokemon Go. You can definitely tell who's playing by how they're looking at their phone. I'm new to campus and I didn't know this side of campus existed, so it's just kind of cool. Wright State is awesome and it's a great place, especially to play this game. Johnson County Community College in Kansas was among the first to map their Pokestops and gyms. Because the players have to wander around, the college tells me students are learning more about the school, like, for example, that there's an art gallery on site, something some of the students didn't even know. So today, the community college's student life department organized a tour of the school. There are at least 20 pokey stops and three gyms on the site. BCIT, the British Columbia Institute of Technology, organized a real-life scavenger hunt they called Pokemon Go Day to encourage students and staff to bring their families to campus. Today at BCIT, uh, everyone's playing Pokemon Go. And they're also playing out free Pokemon stuffies that uh, you have to go out and find. I think we found that in the treehouse. I saw something. I went back around, went up on the staircase. I saw this. We're just catching some Pokemons. I gotta try to level up. <laughs> At UC Berkeley, Pokemon hunters can take an impromptu, self-guided campus tour. If you get a lure, you can click on the building's info, and then through GPS, you can literally learn, you know, your basic information about this building. If you haven't already discussed ways to incorporate Pokemon Go into your next student recruitment cycle, rest assured your competitors have. At a time when public health experts are concerned about the impact of a sedentary lifestyle on North American youth, Pokemon fans were quick to emphasize the exercise component of the game. It's really easy to do. You get out, you do a lot of walking. A lot of people probably didn't walk that much before. <laughs> I know I've hit my steps <laughs> every day this week playing it. Um, I think my friends and I have hit at least five miles minimum every day that we've played it together. UNM Health even asked employees to join in on a pokey walk. Campus student life and mental health professionals are hopeful that augmented reality games like Pokemon Go may create a stronger sense of community, especially for introverts. It gives us all that sense of connectivity when we're going back into like childhood. Everybody who is coming together as part of this game, the stories we're hearing where they're meeting new people and they're experiencing new places, having them all come together in a positive way is just really fun. Pretty much every walk of life is here. It doesn't matter age. James Walker is with UNM's Residence Life. He says the craze is building community. <laughs> so why not embrace it, complete with a charging station? When you're out playing, you're seeing other people that are actually looking for the same things you are and looking for characters and trying to get them. Got it. Woo! <laughs> Even the introverted students, they're, they're looking up and saying, hey, there's four or five like me, and then they start talking. I'm not one to actually like get out and go meet people and stuff like that, so being involved and seeing people that are actually doing the same thing is just a big, big excitement thing for me. Naturally, school mascots were among the first to get into the Pokemon craze, like Duke the Lion at Florida's Warner University. This summer, some students were already beginning to worry that their obsession with the game might be interfering with their studies. It's mind-blowing. I've just been doing this for like the last four days. So sorry, Dr. Bryant, if you're watching this. But apparently not every professor would disapprove. Well, like at Northgate, um, me and my friend, we met our professor. We were catching Pokemon together. When I'm walking through or to Pokestops, I'll see another person who's using it on their phone and you know, give, my, give my head nod like, hey, I'm doing this, I'm doing this too. I was also thinking about maybe using lures in Evans Hall during my office hours. In fact, within weeks, at least one community college announced a new credit course in Pokemon, in Phys Ed. 
Fresno City College, a community college in California, is offering a physical education class using the popular mobile app Pokemon Go for their fall semester. The class will use the Pokemon Go app to promote fitness through walking and finding Pokemons on the FCC campus. Students can earn one credit for the class. A spokesperson for the school also confirmed that poke stops and gym markers will be added to the campus maps handed out to students in the fall. Once again, our 10 minutes is up way too soon. There's one more back to school video you need to see. But first, please take a moment to subscribe to this podcast on iTunes, YouTube, or by email. Subscribers to my free email newsletter will get early access to upcoming episodes. Perhaps my favorite back-to-school video this fall comes from the Dalhousie University Student Union. They welcome students back to campus with a rousing three-minute music video, a tribute to their school colors, black and gold. Here are some excerpts, just in case you missed it. Bound, listen if you will. Cross McDonald Bridge, Salutation, Citadel Hill. Ripping right down Row B, the name the Crest and Bricks. Further down University, you'll see the Henry Hicks. So it's that time again, the leaves are falling down. Once you've waited, but you know it is September now. Each corner of the globe brings you things you've never seen All walks of life join in high harmonies Dow's your home, forward we go Becoming who you're meant to be Heads will turn, I'll be home 